Yo, 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 This your boy, Luce. I got my boy, DZ. We are the Levi's Wise Guys. Check out the full podcast. Link below. Yo, 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 We are the ill-advised wise guys. It's your boy Uche. I got my boy. QDZ. For Sheezy. It's way too easy. AKA Widow's Peak Bandit. AKA Michael Gordon. AKA Mr. Steal Your Spaghetti. I'm back. And better than ever. Forever, ever, forever, you know, ever. Welcome back to another episode of the ill Wise Guys podcast. Shout out to y'all for pulling up. If you don't know who we are, my name is Uche. This is Q, also known by other 10 other names he's created. But, you know, nonetheless, salute to everybody who rocked with our last episode. Um, shout out to Six Salim, video editor. I thought he did a great job. Amazing. You know? Amazing. Phenomenal job, you know, Amazing on the show. Job. And if you need video editing work, make sure to contact him. You got some church announcements? Not really, but, it, you know. Mm. Got some synagogue ones. I don't know if I feel like going to church right now because Kanye's making church sound bad. Well, what church does he go to? Because I want to stay far away from that one. If you guys uh, would like to follow me and and this guy over here, make sure to go to the description. More importantly, man, salute to everybody out there, man, for continuously rocking with uh, the playlist we got going on. You know, I've become somebody who really likes indie music. I want to hear undiscovered talent. And so if if you're like me, You're going to really enjoy this playlist. And shout out to the artists who made the playlist as well. You know, we rock with you on the show. You already know what it is. Check out RatingsGameMusic.com, a.k.a. RGM, a.k.a. Mm -hmm. We got reviews from Metro Boomin's new album, Heroes and Villains. Metro Boomin wants some more, more. A review from it. We got a review for NBA Youngboy and uh, Quando Rondo's new album, called 3860 check that out and then you know some couple singles dropped here and there it was really quiet in music these past two weeks once again mm-hmm. ratingsgamemusic.com aka rgm we, we, we started putting content from ill wise guys on the uh actual site rgm uh he finally signed the contract it took his ass a long time but he signed it now we're all good to go you know what i love that's being done by the interns and the management team of this podcast. We are taking the time to dissect the best parts of our podcast. So you guys can listen to it. You don't got to go through all the fluff. You don't got to listen to all the things you don't feel like listening to. We took the time. Initially, I was watching the podcast on IG mainly. Mm -hmm. But then I started watching those YouTube clips, which Cameron does a fantastic job of. Absolutely fantastic. Cutting it up, making me sound good on there, bringing out the most important parts. And then also adding like animation and real time like responses that you would get from you know, the things that we said. So mm-hmm. um, check it out. You know, kudos to us. It's December, man. This is, this is the, the end of the year. We got to give ourselves a damn pat on the back. We got three topics. Yeah, three topics, right? Yeah. So at least we're going to get into this uh, Saweetie uh, conversation. If you guys are familiar, you know, with what's going on in the news, her album or EP, whatever you want to call it, sold, I believe, two 2,000 copies, which caught some people by surprise. There seems to be a real big divide between somebody who's very popular on social media. You can really be a brand. You can really be a star, but still be a musician. Nobody really be consuming you for your music. We are going to cover good boys club. That's going on in hip hop. Like, are we, are we getting way too many albums with the same a list hip hop stars and not enough up and comers? Definitely. We're going to cover that topic. Well, first let's get into this, uh, free speech conversation right what i think we're we're uh, going there yeah man we got to man i think right now in just society we're at a very very interesting point you know there's a lot of people who are pushing back on um or who, who are pro free speech the idea that you can just say whatever you want and you should be able to do that on social media, regardless of the platform. Then there's other people who are like, nah, that's too much. We should censor certain types of content. We're at a divide right now. There's Kanye West in the media saying whatever he wants to say. People feel some type of way about what he's saying, rightfully so. Uh, but then there's other people who are like, yo, 
No, I think he should be able to say and do whatever he wants to say. Like, we shouldn't silence him. We shouldn't put a muzzle on him. It's dangerous for us to try to silence people. So I think this translates to the music as well, right? The debate about, you know, people being able to say and do whatever they want in their songs and not being held accountable is also part of this too, right? We've seen people being prosecuted, Mm -hmm. lyrics being used against them, people saying, yo, it's free speech. I should be able to say whatever I want. Can you really say whatever you want? Without consequences, or are people just delusional? You know what I'm saying? I, I alley this to you, sir. Mm-hmm. I, I really want to know how, really how you want to attack this, because there's so many different ways. There's so many different ways to slice it. One of the main reasons I wanted to talk about this is because an interview that Akon did with uh, Sky Network, and the reporter asked him about Kanye and how you know Kanye was talking about Hitler and the Nazis and things like that. And Akon said, I'm a backer of the right to believe what you want to believe. Um, That if he spoke with Kanye, he'll give him his point of view on why he disagrees, Mm -hmm. but communication is key. Then he also said, don't take things too personal until you really understand the situation. So in that full interview, he pretty much was saying like, because of the First Amendment, because of free speech, kind of can't get mad at Kanye for saying whatever the hell he wants to say even if it you know incites a riot or even if it is talking about Nazis which growing up I've always felt like that was the red line like when you start to talk about all that stuff that was mm-hmm. the red you couldn't cross that red line and so in this world where the first amendment free speech where you can technically say whatever you want to say. When it crosses that red line, what do you do? Long story short, I just don't believe in free speech. This is before Kanye. This is before, you know, all the craziness that's happening today. A couple years ago, I said to myself, I don't believe in that First Amendment rule. Yes, America was built on the First Amendment, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But if you're talking about free speech, Nobody really necessarily brings up that there's consequences for your free speech. So is it really free speech? This free speech First Amendment law that was created, which was created, what, in the 1800s, 1700s, I don't know. 1800s, 1770, 17, 18, whatever. They didn't have Instagram back then. They barely even had toilets. (laughs) So, like, (laughs) I personally think free speech and the First Amendment, as great as a law it is, Mm -hmm is getting a lot of people in trouble and you you really question do we really have free speech in america because it's even getting rappers in trouble when they you know rap on a song right Mm -hmm. they're rapping on a song they're just talking yeah but they're using their lyrics against them in court Mm -hmm. how like i thought i can say whatever i wanted to say why is there consequences for what i said like does the first amendment actually apply or is this something that people are just trying to like fake like it does because i don't think it does the first amendment is under attack laws are written with the intent to be able to be updated or at least they should be yes and to your point we over here talking about laws that were written in the in the 18th 17th. century yeah how is it that hundreds of years later <laughs> we're still talking about laws that were not necessarily tweaked yeah. to adjust to modern civilization, modern society, technology. Essentially, the Bill of Rights, which is the first 10 amendments, including the freedom of speech, it remains untouched for the most part. And, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. Listen, this is called, we're the ill-advised wise guys. I could have just made that up. So you guys do some Googling to verify this, you know? But this is not about us being right or wrong, right or wrong mm-hmm. about like the specifics of the of the bill. This is about like it's under attack, and I do think that you should not be able to say whatever you want to say, and think that you mm. should be able to get away with it. Right? I think there's a limit. That's a controversial take, right there. Like, it is what it like, is. That's a controversial take. No, but think about this, right? Free speech is relative. I know people think, oh. I'm speaking, so I should be able to say whatever I want. If you have a nine to five job, so you're just going to say whatever you want to say to your manager, to your uh, director, to the CEO of the company who pays you on a, on a, two, to, on a two week basis. You're just going to say whatever you want and think that because you have free speech, you should be able to get away with it. I think most people will be like, nah, of course you can't say whatever you want to mm-hmm. say. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, 
free speech is relative to what the setting we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we're not talking about work. So, like, let's bring this to music. Let's bring this to, to Kanye. Let's bring this to the people in the media, to the creative. I do think that you can offend people mm-hmm. with what you say. And if somebody decides to be offended by something, you can't be like, yo, I was just joking. Like, you shouldn't be offended. You can't tell somebody how to react. I mean, you, you, I mean we can overcomplicate this if we want, but you cannot it, tell somebody how to react. Now, you can ask them for clarification and be like, mm-hmm. wait, like, tell me how I offended you. And hopefully they'll be able to explain and to where it would make sense. And you, as somebody who's an understanding individual, mm-hmm. should be able to be like, you know what? Even though I didn't intend to, to, to upset you, boom. You know what? I can see where you, you're coming from. I mean, I fully agree. But damn it, it is what it is. Well, we know we're not living in a society like that. R- right now, mm-hmm. we're living in a society where people are under the impression that they can just say things without consequence. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that's that's going too far. 100%. I don't think people should be silenced. I'm mm-hmm. not a fan of that. Because the minute you start saying, let's stop people from talking, that's a slippery slope. Because where does that stop? Mm-hmm. You if you If you start that, if you open that can of worms, that's a dangerous one. Because now you can just apply that to anybody. and mm-hmm. I, So I don't think it should go that far. That's extreme. But I do think people should be able to be held accountable for stuff that they're saying. And whether that looks like public pressure, whether that looks like backlash, whether that looks like the people who you're in business with saying, we don't want to be in business with you anymore. That's what it looks like. People are, are entitled to, to be able to react the way that they want to based on what you say. In this situation where you know Kanye is clearly spewing out some crazy rhetoric which by the way i want to make this clear mm-hmm. i am not on kanye's side i <laughs> look, do look. not believe hey, 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 anything P- kanye said. hey can we give a psa i don't support anything hey. psa <laughs> i do not support anything kanye is saying i am not on his side point blank period but At all. here's the thing that's the slippery slope so elon musk went ahead and suspended his twitter account mm-hmm. he said that but some of his posts were inciting violence. Okay. But then it's like, isn't there videos that you see on a daily basis of people with guns? Don't you see videos? But of let's keep it a buck. Let's keep it a buck. Threatening people. Okay, we gotta keep it a buck. No, 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 no. So, so no. So, so there's essentially <laughs> what I'm trying to say. The First Amendment and the mm-hmm. free speech, especially on social media, there's just such a big hypocrisy going on. It's not consistent. It's, it's not very inconsistent. I have to say this. What though. does that mean? I have to say this though. To to the to the example you just gave, the reason why uh, Elon Musk is more willing to hold a Kanye West accountable and say your your words are inciting violence, whether or not I agree with him or not, the point is Kanye is a big platform. America and the world doesn't care about Joe Schmo. I, I'm sorry, they so don't. It's, it's, they they hold so people who they hold people of status more accountable Mm -hmm. than the people who don't have a platform honestly i don't think there's any way around that i think that actually makes sense like if you have a platform that means your words it can reach more people yeah and so if you're saying something that's wild i mean maybe you you may need to no it makes sense you see what i'm saying no it makes perfect sense because at the end of the day what what Kanye needs to realize, he has a lot of people that are following his every word. He has a lot of people that are actually listening to him and saying, maybe he's right. He has a responsibility. It kind of goes back to the combo we had with Dramos. He has a, respons- a responsibility with such a platform to make sure he doesn't like, you know, spew out reckless rhetoric, right? Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I'm saying Elon Musk, right? He came out here. Hey, this is a brand new Twitter. We're no longer silencing people. It's a free speech Twitter. What does that look like? What does that sound like? Okay, there's free speech for some people. You know, people that are not popular. The First Amendment is an issue specifically in the hip-hop community. Mm. Because I feel like they pick and choose with hip-hop. Definitely. When they want to say, you can't say that. 100%. 100%. You know what I mean? You you can't do that. You can't say that. We're going to suspend this person. We're going to uh-huh. suspend this person. You know, I am by, by no means on Kanye's side in terms of the rhetoric he's spewing. But at the same time, what Kanye, which I'm sure he knows, he is highlighting a hypocrisy, yes. in my opinion. No, nah, he's definitely doing that. That goes with free speech. You're like, I can say what I want. I can feel what I want to feel. But then you guys are trying to cancel me. So it's like, I think you, like you said, the First Amendment's in trouble, man. Like You see it every day. Dave Chappelle. A free speech mandate. Free speech mandate. <laughs> Dude, Dave Chappelle went on SNL, and they were like, he told some jokes. All right, it was funny. 
Then there were some things that were kind of cringy. It is what it is. Then they said mm. he's anti-Semitic. That's what they said. Yeah. Was it? I'm not saying it wasn't, but I'm I'm asking the question like, <sighs> was it or was it not? And then we don't have to get into that mm-hmm. per se. I'm just giving you an example. Like the the idea of free speech is it's in comedy. Mm-hmm. It exists in music. Mm-hmm. It's on social media. Yeah. It's yeah. it's anybody right now who has a platform at this point. Yeah. Is threatened. Uh, I'm sorry. Should feel threatened by like the stuff that they say. Like even us, we got a we got a show, yeah. right? Like yeah. damn, people are not going to agree. Yeah, yeah. You, you, y'all are not going to agree with everything. Might be like we took it too far. I mean, I don't think I said anything that took it too far, but I do think that hypocrisy over. exists in free speech and First Amendment, and people need to be aware. That's just me being a conspiracy theorist. You want to go to the next topic? Yeah, let's do it. All right, next topic. So this is the sweetie one. So I recently did a blog post. About Sweetie's uh, latest EP. I don't know if you heard it. It's called The Single. I did. I actually did. It's about seven, seven, eight songs. Quick listen. One of the comments I made in the post was Sweetie is one of the most popular hip hop artists in the world. Then the second sentence I said, She had a freaking McDonald's meal. Yeah. That's how popular she was. Then the third sentence I said, Sweetie is not the best female rapper in the world. I think Sweetie's caught up in this matrix where she's super duper popular, but I don't think her music matches her popularity. And and I'm not, this is not a diss, this is not an insult. I think this is just an observation. I'm I not think trying to, it's constructive bro, criticism. I think that's, I think she would agree. <laughs> I really believe Sweetie would agree with that. So I think Sweetie's in that matrix where she's winning the brand sweetie is winning but i'm not too sure her music is winning rumors started to swirl that sweetie that the single life ep uh only sold 2k Mm -hmm. in its first week it's an ep i don't think she marketed that well i don't know why people are paying attention kind of goes back to what you were saying a couple months ago about like they really like hyper focus on hip-hop sales but Whatever is what I said. <laughs> Rumors are circling around like, okay, she's not that good. Some people are saying, some people are saying she's being blackballed. Uh, I think that was Young Berg, aka Hitmaker, said something like the label, it did not treat her right. And then there was reason, right? Said that, you know, from TDE. He mentioned something about. Before I even get into his tweets, mm-hmm. like to me, the overall, I think, conversation that I want us mm-hmm. to have is, is the artist development side of these artists that we mm-hmm. listen to on an everyday basis is that lacking is that Which something is essentially that, what reason was saying correct and yeah. i think if we approach the conversation from that point we'll, we'll have a different discussion than just talking about her sales and whatnot because yeah, because yeah, yeah, this yeah. is really about yeah like you said the yeah. the the comparison between your brand and the music itself not, not being good enough yes. to match your brand, right? Reason said a couple things. To me, it was I, I think it was controversial. He said, this Saweetie album sales is really funny. But also, in my humble opinion, she's a representation of the lack of artist development. He said, Sweetie is a star. She's proven that. Mm-hmm. But you still have to develop artists and help them make better records. He said, mm-hmm. I'd love to write for Saweetie. He's like, yo, I'm addressing this only because... You know, people were just going crazy at him, like mm-hmm. mentioning him and mm-hmm. and every conversation. Like he said, um, any person that can get millions of people to engage, be invested, like them, and follow them is a star. He said that is talent. Uh, I gotta push back on that. I gotta push back I think on that. That's a pill. There's a difference between talent and a pill. I think so. what he's trying to get at is like the ability mm-hmm. to make someone care about what you do mm-hmm. is talent. Because if it wasn't, everybody would be able to do it. Absolutely not true. Yo, remember how we've had this conversation about basketball? It's hustle. Yeah. A talent. Is it a skill? Is it a skill? To me, if you have a skill, you you should say that's a talent, right? The reason I always said hustle is a skill is because you could could say people are able, people are capable of hustling. Mm -hmm. But the fact that not everybody does it, whether it's because they don't want to, whether they can't do it hard enough, to me means that you're doing something that... You're consciously able to do, and it's better than the rest of the talent. I'm trying to tell you, bro, it's a skill, bro. When we first had that discussion, since then, I've recognized the the importance of the words that you use. Uh, In the last podcast about Big 21 21 Savage. About relevant? Relevant was not the right word. You're not using the right word to me. Okay, tell me. So Talk to me. Hustle is an asset. If you're a basketball player, there's a difference between asset and skill. 
I think we all have the hustling, the ability to hustle. Right. But if you're somebody that actually hustles, that is an asset. That is one of your assets. That's not a skill. That's something that you take advantage of. That's what an asset is. Everybody has the ability to hustle. Now, if you are an NBA player that actually uses your ability to hustle, that means you're using your asset. The other people that don't hustle are not using their asset. And skill and talent is someone who can do things that not everyone else can do. Now, going back to Saweetie. Go ahead. Right? I disagree, by the way. Going back I don't to agree with Saweetie. That. I'm 100% right. No, you're anyway, not. Now, going back, words, right? I yes. love words. Words are very important. Sweetie, to me, is not that she's talented. I fully disagree. In my opinion, has a pill. Notice how he say she's a star. She's a star. And I'm like, that's what think, he, that's his overall she's point. she's a star, but I think she's a star because she has a pill. The hip hop industry, the music industry, it's not always about what you're able to do or what you're able to output. Yeah. Like, it's also how you look. Yeah. It's also how you carry yourself. It's also how you can di differentiate yourself from the pack. Yeah. And I think Sweetie, she does a great job of, one thing that I tell this story all the time, and I think Sweetie does very well at this. Lil Wayne, I guarantee you. I would say I was old enough to remember when Lil Wayne had his ride. Before Fireman and before Carter 1 and Carter 2 and all that stuff. I remember when Lil Wayne was kind of just there in the hip-hop industry, right? And one thing that always was noteworthy to me was Lil Wayne would say, I'm the best rapper alive. And when I was younger, I was like, yo, this dude, Lil Wayne is saying he's the best. Yo, hey, I, I went home and told people, I said, yo, Lil Wayne is saying he's the best rapper alive. But then, because he said that, I started paying attention. I was like, okay, best rapper alive, put up some good verses. He caught our attention because he kept saying it. And I think Saweetie, she does a really good job of letting people know that she's important. Letting people know she's a boss. Which, which Letting people know, like, so, yo, I'm not on so, these other people's level. So you brought up the Lil Wayne example. That's a great example. You know what he was doing by saying, I'm the best rapper alive? Marketing. So when so when Reason says verbatim, which, again, I don't agree with his overall, like, everything he said, but I agree with some of this stuff. When he says, Sweetie is a star, mm -hmm. any person that can get millions of people to engage, be invested, like them, and follow them is a star. I agree with him. But when he says Come that on, is talent, guys, guys. but think of she's a star. Sorry, Here, sorry, you know where things go left? When he says this is talent, which you can argue market being able to market is talent. That's a skill. You have to know. Yes. See, now I agree. You, That's you not where an I'm asset. Going? That's a skill. I'm not using the word asset. While Saweetie can be a star, which I, I from that standpoint, we can agree somebody, all right, she's bad. Okay, people want to look at her. Yeah. She's over here getting people to want to care about her. Cool. She's not a star for her music. Actually, she has some good. She has some bangers. Okay, she got a couple. So, she got a couple. What? But what I'm saying is she doesn't have a fan base for music. In my personal she does. opinion, I don't she think so, does. bro. She makes the same music as like the Erica Banks of the world. In my opinion, I believe people are not invested in Saweetie for her music. Nobody is. They're it's not. So, nobody says Sweetie's their favorite artist. Respectfully, I look. I love Sweetie. Respectfully, don't cop please now. However. They are listening to Sweetie's music. Okay. Because you it's, it's inevitable. Commercials, you hear Sweetie's music in the club. You've heard Sweetie's music, and there's a lot of songs that she's made that you nodded your head to. Right. However, remember when I, I opened up this topic, what I was trying to say when I said Sweetie's not the best rapper is that she's not, to me, she doesn't have the best rap skills out of the group of women but that doesn't mean that you don't have music that pops that doesn't mean yeah, that never, you don't make music yeah. that people like you can also not be the best we're saying some of the same things but i'm going a step further when i say sweetie does not have a fan base of people who rock with her for her music what i mean by that is yes of course everything you said is true there's something about being able to create a group of people who like your music over a period of time. There is something like that. Lil Wayne did it from day one. Come he marketed on. himself as the best rapper alive. He Come put on, out skip. he put out a great album. Because Lil Wayne then was put actually out. a good rapper. That's my point. Like so I mean, is not a good rapper. Yeah, but she's still getting people to, to how she doesn't make great music. This bleeds into the next topic. It is the good boys 
in good girls club of hip hop music does that exist what is the good girls and good boys club you know i feel like that's a term that they used in the 80s does hip hop literally just have the same group of people that you're hearing on all the mainstream music. Like for instance, uh, we talked about it earlier, Metro Boomin dropped an album called Heroes and Villains. I was really surprised at how simplistic the guest appearances were on that album. I mean, it was really just 21 Savage. It was shocking. Travis Scott. I don't it know was why, shocking. I, don't I thought know why it was I didn't gonna be a that. lot more people. I feel like going into it, I didn't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. As I was listening to it, I'm like, this makes sense. It makes perfect sense. I loved it. <laughs> like it makes I loved sense it. why he I would do it. that. And, and because, you know, historically speaking, Metro Boomin has built quite the rapport with those three artists that I mentioned. Matter of fact, in my review on ratingsgamemusic.com, I said that album felt like a Metro Boomin all-star game. If you've been listening to Metro Boomin for all these years, you know that Metro Boomin's chemistry with Future is fantastic. His chemistry with 21 Savage is fantastic. His chemistry with Young Thug is pretty good. His chemistry sure, with at this point, Travis Don, Scott, should, Don, Don Tolliver, Tolliver is getting up there. Is getting up there. That's new. That was a new one. You know who he did not have chemistry with? ASAP Rocky. Why was he, what was no, he doing no, on He there? didn't have chemistry with Big Sean. I'm glad Big Sean was on there. Okay. My personal favorite connection he had was with Travis Scott. Mm. On that album, Twenty One Savage and him killed it. Future and him were a couple songs that was pretty dope. Yep. Uh, by the way, my favorite song on that album is the one with the weekend and Twenty One. I Savage. love that. That's song. The creeping fire. I do all these album reviews. One thing I'm noticing is I'm seeing the same people on these albums. Yep. Like it's Lil Baby, Future, Twenty One Savage, mm. Kodak Black sometimes, and uh, Travis Scott. Yeah, Young Thug, Gunna. It's like the same people over and over again. At this point, it doesn't even matter like what the song sounds like. As long as it has those people, people are going to you know, listen in and tune in. My concern is there's a lot of talented artists that you know may not be getting the same love because they're not a part of that big boys club. Could you imagine all of the songs that a guy like Denzel Curry, how many songs he could have made better? Could you imagine what... Like Ski Mask, the Slump God, or like D Smoke would sound like like if he was a part of that big boys club. Agreed. You know? So is that an issue hmm. or is that something that you actually like? Cause I know a lot of people will be like, yo, at least that means I can guarantee it's listenable. Is that is that hurting hip hop? In particular with with uh, Metro Boomin, like I liked what he did. I, I'm always gonna want to hear like a more more of a variety, like especially a producer. He's a producer. And he never said, I'm going to lock in with one or two or three people. So I'm thinking he's going to be like a DJ Khaled. Like, at least DJ Khaled, he has a little bit more variety. Because DJ Khaled is looking for He's looking for reggae. Genres. He's yeah, looking for he's reggae. Looking for He'll get R&B artists in there, right? With that being said, even though I didn't know what to expect from that project, I also kind of was like, damn, this kind of fits Metro Boomin. Like, if you know any of his history, he pretty much has a tag mm -hmm. for, from each one of them dudes. He got a tag from Young Thug. Yeah, hey, young Metro, don't trust you. I'm gonna shoot. Like he has no, one with future. True, but he mm. Metro. Yeah. That's the that's the thug one. He has one with all. He has a report, and then he got one with Twenty One Savage. <laughs> is that what it is? I don't know. <laughs> I actually liked the album. I did. Uh, I, I gave it a C plus. Yeah, I liked there you go. it. I liked it, but I didn't think it was great. Before I get into other stuff, I want to get my my top three songs, or at least the songs that I say. Creeping, the one you were just talking about with Weekend. I like Around Me. Around Don Tolliver. Great. Those Don Tolliver songs were great to me. I didn't like any of them. Rounding off the uh, the top three with Trance, the one with um, uh, Travis Scott oh, and I Young that. Thug. Young Thug, oh, Travis Scott and Young Thug. That was a good one. That was Love my top that two. Song. So Creepin' was Love one. Trance was two. And then I really liked the joint with Future and Chris Brown. Like the intro. Ooh. That joint was fire. That was good. And the way Chris Brown came yeah. in at the end. And um, 21 Savage and Young Nudie. Uh, that joint was fire. Umbrella. I do think there is a, a a good old boys club in, in hip hop. And I do think it's kind of hurting, man. Um, You would hope for like these producers like Metro. You know, the uh, DJ Khaled's. We're eventually going to get allegedly a uh, hit, hit maker album with Young Berg. He's 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 developing his album. I like I like hit maker. Listen, when he drops his I like album, I want to hear a variety. And I believe we will, because even the artists that he touches, mm -hmm. the genres, 
Mm-hmm. He's everywhere, right? So I think that's kind of where Hitmaker? it starts. Not really. Hitmaker is an R and B guy. He's like, an R, but he's I like R and B. He's R and B, but he also does like crap R and B. He does like melodic stuff too. Yeah, for a Hitmaker album, I want to hear just all R and B. I want to hear a mix, man. I you don't want to just hear, have all R and B. I don't want to hear no trap. I want to hear fair t- enough. A lot of Ty Dolla Sign. I want to hear like a lot of Jeremiah. All right, man. Fabulous. Throw him in there. But anyway, in mainstream rap, that is where the issue is. Is a lot of recycling. Of these same artists, the little babies, the young thug. There's a there's a crop of dudes that you're hearing on everybody's album. That's not to say that they're all bad. Or bad. Anything. A lot of them are good. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying it would be nice to have more of a, a mix variety, up. right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like the one thing about Metro Boomin, which I'm gonna say something controversial. Mm. It's his ill advised wise guys, right? I pay my taxes, right? This is how Kanye started before it. he said what he said initially. <laughs> we made just it. Just saying, Metro Boomin. Will go down. In my humble opinion, he is the best producer I've ever heard. Oh, no. he is the best oh, producer I've God. ever heard. You guys are gonna sit here and be like, Neptunes. Yes, Neptunes. <sighs> Neptunes had a catalog. Put your damn hat back on. I love Neptunes catalog. I love it. Timberland had a great catalog. I'm fully aware. Dr. Dre. Has an amazing catalog. Metro Boomin's production is literally unbelievable. Unbelievable. Can I just say something real quick? Yes. You know what I don't like? You make a good point, but you lead with the BS. What did I do? You said he's going to go down as the greatest ever? Okay. What? Hip hop producer. What right? are you talking so, about? Like, he bro. doesn't have as many hit records as Neptune's, or he doesn't have as many like records that we all love. But if you actually are like somebody who likes production, bro, the I'm, way the way that Metro Boomin puts together these tr- dramatic, I, I mean, riveting, yeah, freaking riveting. I love the Neptunes. Why you keep talking about Neptune? Because I think they're two. Uh, I think Dr. Dre's three. Freaking, I think th- there's so many. Lands four. They're all they're all amazing. Swiss Beats. But Metro Boomin's the only producer, and I've listened to music my whole life. He is the only person where I literally listen to his beats and I say, I'd rather listen to it without rappers. That whole album, I'm okay. like, I'd rather listen to it without rappers right. because it's so intricate, it's so riveting, it's so complex. The way he combines uh, look, trap vibes with brother. horror mu- movie vibes. Listen Morgan to it. Morgan Freeman? Morgan Freeman. Like, the, 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 the somatic he is, feel. Just go listen to his beats. Yo, know, look. His production is amazing. Before I go at you, I want to say to the people that, number one, Metro Boomin deserves this energy. He does. He is that incredible of a producer. So I'm with you, like, with the majority okay. of stuff you're saying. And I'm not going to trash you too much because clearly you you walking back a lot of the stuff. You I walk, walk back. I, you I walk back say, the I initial. I said hip-hop. I meant to say hip I thought we were in the context of hip-hop. This is not a pop show. I wanted to clarify what because I heard. I get, I get the, I get the blicky. <laughs> All right, you, you sure you want to say that on camera? See, we're talking about free speech. <laughs> hey, free speech is it really free? I could call the police. I it's like, no, nah, I have to echo everything you're saying. Like this, Thank you. Thank this you. dude. I mean, he is a goat the, of the last 15 years in rap. Yes, Metro Boomin is top three. He's top five. He's up. Like he, years? he's the. The, you're talking 15 years that's easily metro boom yes. no let's start there okay All and right, then cool. we're gonna go back okay, even cool. more because cool. let's talk about the dominance of atlanta now you translate that to other the 90s and you want to get into dj premiere there's a whole bunch of people who are gonna bring up the premieres right and i respect it. which is all I respectfully even done diddy, diddy and the hitman were putting together there was so many of them man biggie I respect it. We're people, on a, we're on a deep dive for no reason. People, listen, people, because I know people are gonna sit here and be like, "Why you say I? I'm right a lot. I may be wrong a lot, but I'm right a lot." Like what I'm saying is not coming left field at all. Look, like I know all of these producers. Everybody's gonna be like, "What? What about DJ and uh, DJ Premier? What about Ninth Wonder?" I'm fully aware hey, look. of every producer that we claim are goats in the game. Metro Boomin is personally the best I've ever heard. Look, whatever. That's personal favorite. I'm not mad at it. It is what it is. I already clarified what you said initially. I'm not even on that anymore. My point is, 
the last 15 years, in my opinion, this guy is up there. It's undeniable. If you want to if you want to disagree, I urge you to go and listen to this man's beats. The imagination yeah. that Metro Boomin yeah. infuses into yes. his his yes. the composition yes. of these beats. Yes. 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 He's miles above yes. the rest. Yes. In I, terms of trap, in terms, in terms of, of rap, in terms he is of miles. I've ever seen. He's miles in terms above of it. I've ever seen. For instance, when he came up with the um, Big Pimpin'. Oh, Big, Big Pimpin'. Big yeah, 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 yeah. Got it, got it, He got said yeah. he got that idea that dun, 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 from a carnival. Like, right. he was like, yo, I just thought about, like, I saw it, heard it in a carnival. Look I was like, that. yo, I can use that. In a, that's a, of course, that's you call pretty, crazy imagination. I thought Timbaland had an amazing imagination. Notice how we ain't even bring up Kanye. Are we just going to omit Kanye I from just Kanye. all conversations now because Kanye. of what he's saying in the media? I love Kanye's beats. Kanye West is a but is a Metro in- Boomin? Wait, Kanye huh? West is above Metro I Boomin love Kanye. in the ranking. It's not even close. Favorites, right? Kanye... Kanye focused on more of a soulful sound and, you know, Kanye's beats knocked. Now, I really personally like them. But what I'm telling you, you know how we say like with Kendrick Lamar? Mm-hmm. I don't think Kendrick Lamar's To Pimp a Butterfly is is more enjoyable than mm-hmm. The Blueprint 1 or I don't think it's more enjoyable than Graduation or et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But when you're talking about crafting a body of work that feels complex, that feels intricate, that feels complete. Not many hip-hop albums I've ever heard in my life is better than To Pimp a Butterfly in that standpoint. That's kind of the way I'm looking at a Metro Boomin' beat. Pay attention to the art of production. There you go. Like you mentioned. Yes. There's not many producers. I don't think there's any producer I've personally heard that gets into the nitty-gritty of production. Hey, we need a Metro Boomin interview, bro. Like he does. You're 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 not wrong per se. Um, you you are wrong about a, a couple things, but I'm not mad at your personal picks. I don't I don't get into people's personal. If you if that's how you feel about your personal pick, have a blast, my G. However, uh, w- without going as far to say he's the he's gonna go down as the greatest ever, which I will not say. I will say that this dude is a goat level talent. He will be a goat. He already is a goat. He has shown that his music is it's above trap. It's it's a work of art. Like I like it's the I like the fact art. that you use the word art yeah. because all the the great producers that we talk about in in history, um, especially the ones that really really have intricacies in their beats. Like again, I bring up Kanye, my beautiful dark twisted fantasy. This is a work of freaking yeah. art. This is not yeah. even music yeah, it's anymore. Not even music anymore. I don't think Metro Boomin is will go down mm-hmm. as the greatest producer. I don't think also people are going to say that they're his favorite. When it comes to the art of production, he's, he's a master. If you guys enjoyed this episode, if you made it this far, if you heard a lot of blasphemy, but you enjoyed some of it, hit the subscribe button and follow us on the socials. I think we reached the end of the show, man. I, I, I think so. Shout out to everybody for rocking with us. We got a new space. We got a new studio. As always, if you are giving advice, just make sure it's ill. Yes, sir. Bow. <laughs>